Hi, John. Really looking forward to going through your portfolio. And uh, I must say that this first picture really grabbed my attention. I've never seen a bird with such uh, interesting colors. This is a very, very dynamic shot. And one thing that I really liked about it is that you allowed far more space in front of the bird than behind. And I really like that composition because the bird is traveling into the picture space and has a sort of a sense of movement and purpose. Now, the only thing I would suggest, I think your exposure is great. I love how the background is dark, which really shows off the, uh, the neck and the head of the bird. I just feel it's a little bit claustrophobic right down here at the feet. Um, actually, this foot is okay, but maybe just give us a little bit more with the grass. And you see how the grass is sort of just too, too um, clipped, uh, for lack of a better word. I like to see just a touch more grass, and then you have a real winner of a composition. Maybe just a little bit more space here. So let's say on the right side, we have just a touch more and on the bottom a touch more. Now you probably can't deal with that now because you've uh, <laughs> you took the shot um, and you can't go back. However, I like to err on the side of a little bit more space than I think I need and then I can go crop later if I so desire. I uh, really wouldn't change much else. Um, a lot of people would find this a little bit distracting. Now there are two schools of thought. Some people say no, this is the natural environment absolutely leave it in. And there's other people who say, this is your artwork, you can do anything you want. Now for me, it depends on the client or the situation or the, the, the destination of the photo. If it's just for me, this photo, then I would simply just get rid of that uh, stick or whatever it is, and that would be great. Now if this was for like a, a magazine that relies on truth, like the, this is the natural environment of this animal, um, then of course I would keep that in. However, we're just going to uh, make this picture a little bit less distracting by erasing those two elements. Okay, so that looks good. Let me pull out of this so we can see the shot. Now I will say Lightroom CC doesn't do the best job of uh, getting rid of certain elements. So what I like to do is, if it's a simple work, then I will use Lightroom CC to get rid of uh, things that I don't want. If it's a complex work, then I will probably go to File, Edit in Photoshop. Now I'm using the Photographer's Plan of Adobe Creative Cloud, which gives me Photoshop plus Lightroom. A lot of people just use Lightroom, and honestly that's usually okay for like 99% of the work needed. If you don't have access to Photoshop to clean up um, the uh, background pieces, then simply use an app like um, Photoshop Fix or Touch Retouch. They're absolutely great. Okay, nice work. Let's get on to the next picture. So this is a, a lovely shot. Um, really great action. The lighting is perfect. You can even see, I think, the, uh, the tongue of this uh, bird and I want to apologize for everyone in advance I don't know the names of birds <coughs> excuse me I have no idea what what the names of birds are in fact I'm I'm really not that good at photographing birds per se although I really enjoy it mainly because my lenses are not that long um, I'm more of a street photographer a travel photographer and, and commercial photographer but I do really appreciate when photo people photograph birds because it's very complex and it takes a lot of patience. Now the only thing I'd suggest for this shot is we just need to try to sharpen the picture a little bit more. It's not, if I, if I take a look, let's go to one to one here, sorry, fit, <coughs> excuse me. It looks like the branch is good and sharp, but we have just the slightest. And it's really not that big a deal. The slightest amount of motion blur because the bird's head was moving uh, a tiny bit. So what we can do is um, often just brush on a bit of sharpness. Let's see what happens if we do that. First I'm going to reset all of my previous settings. I'm going to brush on a little bit of sharpness. So let's go down to sharpness. Now, if you're not using uh, Lightroom CC, uh, most software allows for a certain amount of sharpening. 
Now, sharpening comes in two different ways. One is called global sharpening, where the entire picture space becomes sharp. And that's okay, but sometimes you don't want that because, this, for example, the stick here, the branch, is sharp anyway. We just want the head. Now, watch what happens when I do, um, when I put my cursor over the blue dot. Everything that is brushed turns red. This is called masking. Uh, it's sort of like a, a way for us to see what we are actually changing or altering. Now, at this point, because I took the sharpness up to about 46, I'm in the brush tool, by the way, the picture looks a lot, a lot sharper. The eyes look sharper. Let's look at before and after. Now, it may be hard for you to see on your screen if you're watching this on a mobile device, but I can really see a difference. So here's the original, and here is the corrected version. And the eye is sharp. Now, you may say, well, what about the body? Do we need to sharpen that? Not really. It's the eye is the critical aspect of sharpening in any image, whether it be a human or an animal. It's always very important to get the eyes absolutely sharp. Okay, really nice work. Um, I think it's a, a fun shot. It's a dynamic shot. Maybe I would just try a little bit of cropping here. It's probably, I'm probably sounding like a broken record through these reviews, but I really like it when there's more space in front of the animal than behind. So if I pull in the crop like so, then the body of the bird is intersecting with the uh, rule of thirds. So we have the horizontal and vertical rule of thirds here. So let's accept this crop. And let's look at the before. Oops, sorry. Um, the before is only showing the blur, it's not showing the crop change. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, do you think this uh, sort of adds a little bit more dynamism to the composition? I like the uh, cropping in a little bit more, and we now have sharp eyes. Really good work. Okay, let's get to your next shot. Now this one, we have a similar situation where you, your focus is good. Um, the focus is on this element here, and it's just uh, sort of a little bit soft on the bird itself. And also there's a slight camera shake just from using a slower shutter speed. So I, I would suggest two things. One is um, just be careful about, photograph about the, the focus points. Try to focus on the head. I know it's not always possible because birds move really quickly but we have a little bit more focus on the, uh, the bird feeder than we do the bird. Now with regards to, I feel that there's, that you're need, you need to increase your ISO a little bit and decrease your, your aperture. You may already be at your lowest aperture possible, and that's great. I would suggest a little bit more ISO just to give you a faster shutter speed, especially if you're using aperture priority, which I suggest for bird photography. Now let's do the same thing. Let's try to sharpen up the bird's eyes. So we already have sharpness up at plus 46, and it could be any amount. I just chose that arbitrarily. And I'm going to brush on the bird's eye. And again, I don't really care about the beak, the head, the body. All I care about is the eye. So as you can see, when I hover over the blue dot, this is in Lightroom CC, I see sharpness appear over the eye. I'm going to check my before and my after, and it looks pretty good. Again, you may not be able to see it on your small screen if you're reviewing this video on a mobile device, but it, it actually works well. I see a sharper eye, which I really like. So let's back out. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, I don't really need to crop in too much. I like to, if possible, have the crop lines uh, intersecting, usually on a person's head, but that's not critical. Uh, the body is also very, very good. So let's pull the crop in a little bit, and let's see what happens with this shot. Now, you may say, well, if you crop in like that, then you are ruining your opportunity to go out to buy a frame to print. Well, that is partially true. And that's why, let me back up here, that's why uh, the nice thing about cropping is that usually, almost actually almost all software will allow you to lock um, an aspect ratio. So right now, let's say that we want to go out and buy a frame at the local art store 
and we know that the frame is going to be an 8 by 10. So we're going to click on 8 by 10 and you see how we automatically have the crop parameters and we can move the image around and crop as we like. So we have the rule of thirds intersecting point on the body of the bird. So let's crop that. And now we have a balanced composition, but the nice thing is we can actually frame this using a cheap uh, custom built frame. And we don't, sorry, a, a cheap stock frame. The opposite is going out to get a custom frame, which can be very expensive. Okay, great work. By the way, I love the background blur. Next picture. The lighting on this shot is unbelievable. I think that you did a fantastic job. Well, of course, the lighting is something that you can't control, but you can certainly choose the time of day when you shoot. I love this, uh, you know, the background, uh, the beautiful, nice blur of the background, and everything's going for this picture. I would just suggest, again, and sorry for sounding like a broken record, to pull in the crop a little bit. Now, one thing that you might see, well, uh, what happened up here and here? Well, see this little lock? This lock feature is often in most editing software and it constrains your aspect ratio. So I don't want the aspect ratio constrained. I'm gonna unlock. I'm going to bring the composition back to its normal place. And now I can adjust it as will, as I, as I want. So I tend to like to have the crosshairs of the uh, rule of thirds to be intersecting the body of an animal or a person. So maybe that would be appropriate. Let's see here. Let's, yeah, that looks good. And then I would further uh, go to my um, clone stamp, the clone healing tool, and see if I could just get rid of this. Now, again, some people would say, don't get rid of it because it's part of nature. Well, yes, um, there's, if you want to get rid of it, you can. If you want to keep it in, that's perfectly fine too. Okay, now <clears throat> let's back out, see how we did there. It's not too bad. Now, keep in mind, Lightroom CC isn't the best tool for clone stamping or healing, but it kind of looks okay. It's almost as if it's the bokeh. Uh, of uh, that's similar to these background spheres. So it's it's I think it works well. <clears throat> if I, while I'm at it, I might actually get rid of this as well. So let's go here. Again, this is not not necessary at all. And let's back out, see our picture. Let's go to the before and the after. Okay, nice work. Let's go to your next shot. I think this is your last one. And this is a really great detail shot. By the way, the eyes are sharp. The beak is razor sharp. And I think this is a real winner. And all I would suggest is you may do better with a little bit lower, something like this, and bring the crop in just a touch. Now, this is certainly a situation where there's, there's more space probably behind, obviously behind the head of the bird than there is in front. However, this is perfectly fine. This is a shot, almost a documentary shot, where the bird is, I don't know if this is a feeder or what this thing is that the bird is on, but this is a, a detail shot and I think you did a great job. I love the background blur, so you're obviously using a very low f-stop number. And you have a long lens and even though we have slight movement in the body of the bird, the wings may have been flapping, it doesn't matter. All that we care about is the eye. Is the eye sharp? If so, then we have a winner. Okay, John, that uh, is the end of your review. Just let me double check, make sure we have all, yes, we have all five pictures. I really enjoyed doing it and your photos are amazing and I loved going through them.